Hello, welcome to Film My Run. So the video you're about to see today is uh, of me giving a talk in Cornwall at the inaugural Cornwall Running Show. Uh, it took place uh, last weekend, just gone in April 2022. Uh, I was invited down to talk about my running, which uh, I've been doing and filming now for 12 years or so. So the film that you're about to see is the talk that I gave uh, which also includes video of uh, some of my most significant runs, uh, beginning with my very first uh, 10k run uh, 12 years ago, uh, up until my most recent uh, events. Uh, so it's me talking through all that and explaining about filming and also explaining about the events themselves and, uh, and how I feel about ultra running and trail running and running marathons and, and all things running. So here it is. I hope you enjoy it. Our next guest is going to do uh, a, a talk about himself and his, his running uh, experiences and his channel, um, Film My Run. So, if you don't know who he is, check out Film My Run, but I'm sure we all do. Steve Cousins, welcome. Thank you very much. See, I, I didn't listen to Tracy carefully enough and I've, I've overdone this. Uh, I could have just put a film on and sat down for 15 minutes. But what I did was I made a silent film. Brilliant. So my first race in Brighton, March 2010. I got a camcorder, I gave it to my wife, and I told her to film. So she filmed me, um, and that, that, this is me finishing my very first 10K race. At this moment, she's looking at me, and she's saying, are you ever going to run again? And I say, no, definitely not. However, like every runner still does, I then signed up for my first marathon. Uh, two years later, here I am running the Paris Marathon. Again, I've got my wife with the camcorder, like an idiot running backwards. I don't know why I decided to do that, but she's filming me in the Paris Marathon. I've run the Paris Marathon every year since then. I absolutely love the Paris Marathon. If you get a chance to do it, go and do it. Um, I, I absolutely loved it, but what I then started to discover was trail running. And some friends of mine convinced me to come to Wales, or to go to Wales, and run my first ultra, which was the Brecon Beacons Ultra. And look at that, absolutely, I couldn't believe how stunningly beautiful it was. I couldn't believe that I'd been running all these road marathons, all these road races, and that I hadn't realised that trail running existed. Um, so I did that, but then, this is London Marathon, this is my first ever London Marathon. I was lucky enough to get a good for age time. Um, you can see how wobbly the footage is there. Um, so at this moment, I've, I've now transferred from my wife filming me to me holding a camera. Um, I'm holding a GoPro on a selfie stick. It's wobbly, but I'm learning how to use the camera when I'm running. Um, this is me finishing, I think I did three hours, 18 minutes for my first London Marathon. Absolutely loved it. Again, if you haven't done the London Marathon, if you do get a chance to do it, um, it's one of those iconic events that even if you're a trail runner, even if you don't like these big events, it's, it's kind of something that you need to experience um, at least once, just to, even if it's just to say you've done it or just to, to say you've had that experience. Um, the, the, the different things, running on the trails, um, on mountains, uh, with no one around, is a different experience to running in a crowd in a city. Uh, both, I love them both. So this is my first, this is uh, when I first discovered that you could, not only you could run on trails, but you could climb up massive mountains. You could go on holiday and you could take your family on holiday with you and convince your wife that it's a really good idea um, to go and spend thousands of pounds just so I could run up a mountain. This was my first experience of sky running. This is a race called the Transvolcania Ultra in La Palma, which is the smallest of the Canary Islands. Um, and again, I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. I couldn't believe that I got the opportunity to run on these trails. It was really hot, it was really high up. I was really quite frightened at times with these quite steep drops. You can see now I've transferred to using a motorized gimbal. So I've got my camera on a selfie stick. The selfie stick has batteries in it and it balances the gimbal. A battery ba balances the camera. So. This, the footage is much more stable. Again, I'm learning about editing. I'm learning about how to put together a running film. This is me coming to the end of 76 kilometers of the Transvolcania Ultra. Um, 
it killed me. This was the hardest, up to this point, this was the hardest race I, I'd ever done. There's my son giving me my medal. And uh, I was in tears uh, just because I, I couldn't believe it was so hard. Uh, but, but as you all know, being trail runners and being runners, it, it grabs you by the scruff of the neck. And even though it hurts, and even though you hated every minute of it, <laughs> you want to do it again the next day. So I went from uh, running trail marathons to 50 milers to 76 kilometers, 100K, and this was my first 100 miler, 2016 with my buddy Richard. Again, I've got a motorized gimbal. It took me 24 hours, 23 hours something to do 100 miles along the South Downs Way in Sussex. It's kind of the iconic 100 miler in the UK. Um, Lakeland again is another big 100 miler, uh, but this was us finishing um, around a, a running track in Eastbourne after running the whole of the South Downs Way. Loved every single minute of it. Um, and the only reason this is different to, to any of you guys who do any of this is just that I, you know, I, I, I do love documenting it all, if not only for my own pleasure. Like, Sometimes, narcissistic as I am, I, I watch back my own videos because I like to remember what I've done. Um, but I also run this YouTube channel called Film My Run. You can see now, by 2016, I'm branded. I've, I've got a little logo and I'm putting it in the corner of my films. And I've started the, the Film My Run YouTube channel. And, and occasionally, race directors start phoning me up and saying, could you come and film my race, please? To do some advertising for the for the race, um, and this is the first time that I did a celebrity interview. Um, this is Martin Yelling, who many of you will know, who did an event in 2016 called the Long Run Home, where he attempted to run the whole of the Southwest Coast Path. Um, and this is uh, by accident. I filmed him on his final day. Um, I, I basically just emailed him and said, look, I'd really like to come and film you running around the coast path. He said, yeah, come along then, why not? Um, so I did, um, but it just so happened that he was injured. Um, and this actually turned out to be his final day of running along the coast path. Uh, and he retired injured after this. And a, a number of other people then took up the mantle and ran the rest of it for him. But as a result of that, um, I then got my first paid job because Martin works for the London Marathon. And he said, why don't we do a series of films uh, for the London Marathon organization, documenting what it's like to run the London Marathon. So that's what we did. We, we, um, we got a job. Uh, we we, we um, emailed the London Marathon and said, look, we've got this idea. They said, yes, go for it. Um, so I basically filmed Martin running around London talking about what it's like to run the London Marathon and how to do it and tips and tricks for how to run the London Marathon. And that is still on the London Marathon Facebook page and every year they seem to, prop, uh, to, to put it out again and, and show, us, uh, show the films. It was a series of different films. So then comes my love of the Southwest Coast Path and here is my very first Arc of Attrition. Uh, you'll know now that the Arc of Attrition is a much bigger event uh, but this was 2018, 17, 18, when there were only 100 runners. And we started in Kovrak, as, as they still do, but, but down on the road, as opposed to up in the car park. Um, this was the toughest race I had ever done, up to this point. Um, I mean, you all know this, the, the Arc of Attrition 100. Um, you know how tough it is, you know what the weather's like down here. But again, it grabs you by the scruff of the neck, it won't let go, you have to keep coming back. And I've come back either as a runner or as, a, as an employee of Mud Crew every year since. Um, I said that uh, race directors often contact me and ask me to work for them. Um, and, and Mud Crew is, is one of the companies that, that contacted me after I'd done this film and said, you know, come and do the live streaming, come and do the commentary. Um, for us, and, and I've been doing that ever since. And this was me finishing just, I was the, on this day, I was the last person to get in under 30 hours. I think I got in at 10 to six, 10 minutes to spare, and I got the gold buckle. And this was the first moment I ever met Jane Stevens, who, as you know, at the end of every 
Big Race comes up and gives each runner a big sweaty hug. It's not her that has the sweat, by the way, it's, it's the runners. Uh, so there's Jane giving me my gold buckle. Um, and this film, that film was one of my most successful thousands of views on the YouTube channel. But this one then became the biggest one. Um, I went out to Chamonix uh, to run CCC, which is a 100k race around Mont Blanc. Um, we were lucky enough to meet Jim Wormsley, um, who is one of the best ultra runners in the world on that day. And this was my most extreme challenge uh, to date. This was the race that um, I really discovered mountain running, uh, really discovered what it's like to, uh, to run in a, a big event like this um, and, and had my first Chamonix experience. If you've never had a Chamonix experience, it is, it is something remarkable. A lot of people don't like um, the, the UTMB thing because there's a, there are a lot of runners. If you like a, a solo mountain experience, UTMB is perhaps not the one to do because there are a lot of runners. Um, but again, uh, I've transferred now. Instead of using a GoPro on a, on, a, on, a, on a balanced gimbal, I'm now using what's called a 360 camera. So it's a camera that has two lenses, one on either side, which means that you just hold the camera in one position, but you get a, a view all the way around, all at once. It means I have to do a lot less work when filming because I can get a lot more angles to use. So I could use that angle, but then I could also use the lens on the other side and point backwards the other way without having to turn the camera around. So it's a lot easier to film on the day. It's a lot more editing afterwards though because there's a lot more preparation of the, of the footage to do afterwards because you've got so much more footage to deal with and the files are so much bigger. So it's a lot more to, to edit. Um, but Mont Blanc, amazing, amazing scenery, amazing place to run. Again, if you ever get the chance to go to Chamonix and do this, um, it is something to behold. Um, I was desperately trying to run the 100K in, in 24 hours. And this is me running down the hill at the end, realizing I only had about 10, 20 minutes to get to the bottom of the hill. I basically walked for most of it because I was so shattered. Um, and I realised I had to sprint to get to the bottom. And this is the finish line uh, in, in Chamonix, crossing the finish line just under 24 hours for 100k. There's about 6,000 metres of elevation gain um, in, in that race. It's not the longest of them. But obviously, UTMB itself is the longest race, which is over 100 miles. So you can tell I love running in the mountains. This is the highest race I've ever done. I went to Tenerife. Again, all these abroad trips, I take my family with me. I, I convince them it's a great idea. We go on holiday. So they get to go on the beach by the, by the sea and I get to climb up mountains. Uh, so this is Teed in, in Tenerife. Uh, technically, it's the highest mountain in Spain, um, but obviously it's, it's in Tenerife. Um, it's 3,700 metres high, but the final 200 metres is a protected area, a na nature reserve. You're not allowed to go there without a pass. Without a, 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 you have to get it from the government to get to the very top. But you go to about 3,500 3, metres. Um, and again, when I did this, this then became the toughest race I'd ever done because of the altitude. I'd never felt altitude sickness before, but when you climb to 3,500 metres, you, uh, I started to get very heady and dizzy. Um, one mile took me almost an hour to do. So it took me an hour to do one mile, the last mile to the top of um, Teed. Uh, so if you think about people climbing Everest and you see them do this one step and this one step, I, I got a, a small sense of what that might be like. However, we're now at 2021 July. This has now become the toughest race I ever did. Uh, 10,000 meters of ascent. See, you, you just go from one to the next, to the next, to the next, you get bigger and bigger and longer and longer and harder and harder. This is in a place uh, called uh, Vallela in, in southern Spain, in the Pyrenees. Last year, um, it was called the Val d'Oran 100. So it's 100 miles through the Spanish Pyrenees. Um, 
you don't, I don't go as high, don't go as high as, as uh, Teed in Spain, uh, but this is the second highest uh, point in Spain, uh, a mountain called Aneto there. Um, we didn't actually climb Aneto, but you're, you're basically, uh, you've got a view of it. Um, and this, that's, so that's me at the, just the top of the first climb. Um, and it took me 46 hours and 51 minutes. And basically, at this point in the video, I'm saying this is less of a run and more of a slow hike. It was really, really hot, um, but there was snow on the tops of the mountains, and I basically took the snow and just rubbed it on my legs. And um, I also put it around my neck on a, in, a, in a bandana. Um, these are old mines that used to mine iron ore um, on the top of the mountains. Absolutely stunning scenery, 10,000 meters meters of ascent, uh, unbelievably hard work, two nights of running and two very hot, hot days. And, and this bit is my favourite bit, so you go through these old mining tunnels, you can see the railway line here where the old mining trains used to carry the, the um, iron ore. Uh, and this is me on the final descent down to Vaya at the bottom, it's basically a circle, you go round and come back to where you started, but my legs, see my legs there, I just can't run at all. Um, and this is me coming into the finish. 46 hours, 51 minutes. Uh, I've never run anything that's taken me that long before. I think the longest I've ever taken was 33 hours on a different race. Um, so that was, that was something else that was. Um, if you ever get the chance to do that race, don't. <laughs> Honestly, I'm never going back there again, although it was brilliant. But the thing is about racing, you do end up getting everyone else involved. So my wife was never a runner. She is now. Uh, this was last weekend, uh, and she ran her first 50-mile race. This is my wife, Victoria. Um, she has run. Um, she started running in 2017 after she had some operations on her legs uh, to cure some knee issues. Um, but this last weekend, this was the longest race she'd ever done. Um, and it's a case of if you can't beat them, join them. Because I've been running for so long, and for many years, my wife felt a bit of an odd one out because um, she couldn't run, and she, wasn't, she felt like she was missing out. Um, but since 2017, she's gradually done further and further distances. And basically, just like me, she has graduated to 10Ks, Mar she's done 12 marathons now. Um, she's done a few ultras before this, but this was her longest ever run last weekend. It's finishing the Centurion South Dataway 50. Brilliant starter, 50 miler by the way. Really nice, easy trails, comfortable trails. Um, and she finished in 10 and a half hours. So I was really, really proud of her. Uh, but it's a thing about running that you, you get everyone involved and, and, and you become a family and not you, your own family becomes involved but then you get involved in the running community and the running community becomes your family and here I am in Cornwall and I know loads of you because I've been coming here for five years now to do different races and I speak to all of you on on social media you know and um, I run with people on the treadmill on a, on a, 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 a program called Zwift and it's like having my own little online running community that we meet with people all over the world, all over the world who I chat to um, and run with on the treadmill. Um, running has like, it's, it's grabbed me in the past 10 years um, and it's shoved me uh, into places and, and situations that I never thought I could ever possibly uh, get into. Um, and I've loved every minute of it and I'm so glad that that one day 10 years ago, I decided to, to get my camcorder and film it. You know, I, I, hope, I hope that the films have inspired people to get out there and run and, and to do new things that they never thought they could do. But, but from, a, from a personal point of view, I just love the fact that, that I can go back and say, oh, remember when I did that? That was awesome. You know, I'm never bloody doing that again. Um, and I, I, I've loved it. And I, you know, uh, thank you for, for watching my uh, film of the last 10 years of my running, which is, uh, is actually doing that brought back a lot of memories because Tracy said, you know, can you show a film? I said, well, what film am I going to show? And I thought, well, why don't I just do a documentary of all the, and I had to spend ages going through all my old videos and think, blimey, 
Didn't I look fat in my first one? <laughs> anyway, so there we are. Thank you very much. Well done. For what? <laughs> Turn it up. Turn it up, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so your, your running channel has, what is it, ten, an overnight success, 10 years in the making, as they say. Yeah. The, well, I mean... No, it, it, I, the thing is, I don't put enough time and effort into it because it is. A, it, I still see it as a hobby, even though I get paid for some things that I do now. I still see it as a hobby. So, I, and I'm not very good at marketing and all this kind of stuff. And if you, many of you will know Lloyd from Run for Adventure. I mean, Lloyd started his channel really not very long ago. He's got double the amount of subscribers that I that I have because he puts the effort in. You know, I I I think for me, I enjoy the running more, I enjoy the experience of the community and I enjoy the experience of exploring these new places and going to mountain runs. Um, and I enjoy the video editing and I enjoy the process, but I, I don't enjoy the business aspect of it. I don't, en I don't enjoy trying to get more subscribers. I, don't, I, hate, I hate on my videos, but I, I have to do it. I hate saying, click the subscribe button. I, like, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe and comment down below. You know, it, it, it just, I, 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 I'm a little bit sick in my mouth every time I have to say it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not very good at that stuff. It's, um, you do it very well though. The, 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 the CCC clip that you showed of this. By the way, I've just realised we ran the um, Transport Kenya together. That 2016, I'm just, Did we really? Yeah. Although you finished it and I didn't. Oh. Um, but it is a... Bad know, times. A, yeah, yeah. First DNF. Um, amazingly hard race. But it's... It's kind of... It's that inspiration where you go... You look at somebody else doing it and you think, That's, it's possible. You know what I mean? And, and, and by the way, you are uh, an, ex, an excellent... I know you, you'll balk it, but you are an excellent runner. And the, the challenge that you take on have that natural progression where they get harder and harder and harder. And I think that's just the way that some of us go, certainly the way I've gone with things. But it, it feeds it feeds the beast, seeing all this footage and seeing the experiences. And doing it as a family is always a really good way of doing it. And I've always tried to do the same thing. And it's 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 showing people there's a way to, to have your passion and still have travel and still um, take up time running. Because it's that massive um, um, balancing act all the time of, running versus uh, training versus maintenance versus strength and conditioning versus going to races and the budget for how you're going to travel, what money you're spending on trainers. But if you can involve all the family, of course, then it, it, it levels things out. I, 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 see, I do see myself as a mid-pack runner. I mean, most of the rest, certainly all these big sky running mountain races I do, I'm nowhere near the front. I am, I am slap bang in the middle. If you've got a thousand runners, I'm 500 and something. That's, that's where I am. But, and and that's, that's your average runner. And I've got a wife, I've got kids, you know, I haven't got a massively well-paid job. And I, and I think, I hope that people look at that and they go, well, if he can do it, I can pretty well do it, you know. Um, I, I'm no, I, I, I enjoy running and yes, I've had, you know, I'm lucky enough to be fast enough to get a good for age for London. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of that level. But I'm nowhere near a good runner. I'm not, a, I'm not a brilliant runner by any means. And most, many, many other people are, are, are as fast or as good at running as I am. And, and I hope they look at it and go, well, you know, I, I'm as good as him. I can do that. Why don't I go to La Palma and run Transport Kenya? Why don't I go to Chamonix and, and run CCC? And if he takes his wife and kids with him and they all enjoy the experience. Like my, little, my kids are, you know, they're still only quite young and they, they climb up the mountains in, in uh, Chamonix and, you know, they, they love it, they love Your it. Your daughter's interview with Jim Wormsley just got this massive smile on my face. Did, did he just, um, so in the CCC video, you, you, you walk up to Jim Wormsley in, in the press tent and, yeah. and your, your daughter sits down by the side of him. How, she starts asking you questions like a professional interviewer. So how, how did that happen? Uh, well, we were in the crowd. We knew that the, the Hoka athletes were there um, to sign autographs and stuff. So we were in the crowd and, we, and I got Jim to say something on camera, welcome to film my run or something. Um, and there was somebody from the marketing team watching us and they just spied me and the kids and they said, let's get them to come and interview Jim. So they actually came up to us and said, would you like to come and interview Jim Wormsley? 
we said, yes, please. Um, but they didn't want me to interview Jim, they wanted uh, my kids to interview. Luckily, they're not terribly shy and retiring, so they, and they, and they do Where did they get that from? Yeah, I don't know, no idea. And they do know about running. So they did a passable job of interviewing Jim Wormsley, yeah. which was amazing. It was brilliant. Um, and yeah, so it's, it was that, that was one of the years that Jim Wormsley blew up, or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, constantly. Like he does most as of the time. As he does. Um, but yeah, to kind of bring the whole family aspect into it, 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 does, it does open up opportunities. And, you know, whether that's all going for, um, you know, because all these races, they tend to have different uh, distances as well. So you can kind of, for the UTMB week, they go straight from, I think, 10K to marathon to 50K to 100K. And then we've got TDS and PTL and everything else. So that they all do build them in like that and, and the fun runs in there. So yeah, it's, and, and, and things possible. like La Palma and, and, and Tenerife. Um, all those Canary Island runs and Trans Gran Canaria as well, which is another one I didn't feature on there. They all do children's races as well. So my kids will do the children's race, and then I'll go off with my buddy Richard, and we'll do the big race. Um, and and my wife is wanting to do when we go to Chamonix uh, next. Uh, she's hoping to be able to qualify for OCC, which is a 50k mountain race. Yeah. Um, so, you know, hopefully she'll get to, to do that as well. I, and I, I think that's something we're, we're kind of missing, so if we've got any race directors in the audience. Um, <laughs> children, yeah, the, the, the aspect of that family approach to it, of having multiple generations being able to all turn up to a race weekend and all, all participate and all, you know, operate at their own level, I think that's something that we... I don't know if that happens in the UK, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what White Star Running in Dorset do do races where they try and involve, they, they have kids races, so I don't know if you, many of you have done White Star events, but um, they're, they're, they're quite family orientated over there. So but Centurion certainly don't seem to do, they're, they're Centurion in, in Sussex who do the big South Downs Way and North Downs Way and all those kind of classic hundred milers, they don't seem to have children's races. I think they are missing a trick. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's the way to bring the next generation through. And people are now, I think, approaching the, the next generation, like the fifth generation of trail runners in this country, are certainly fast marathon runners that have come through and are now taking on auctions. You know, they've plateaued, shaving milliseconds off their, their road times, and now they've realised that their, their skills can be transferred to the road. Elsie Davis is a, a local athlete who's just picked up a, a North Face sponsorship patch, and she's a very good road runner who's transferred her skills to trail and she's excelling at that and I think that's the way it's going to go. I think a lot more people will come into the sport so it's kind of dragging up the generations with them as well I think. It's getting younger as well, I mean I've noticed that... Um, I think we're getting older. Well we're getting older, oh that's it, yeah I forgot about that. <laughs> no I mean th 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 you're right and, and that means that a lot of races are being won now by 20 something year old kids you know, not the 40 year old blokes that we are. I, I, the, the Trans Waconia one, I had no idea. It was my first big international race. And I had no idea that they had um, other marathons or other races that ran in conjunction. So, of course, I got to the top. I think it's El, the, the, the first. El Pilar. El Pilar. El Pilar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you come over the top. You've been climbing for seven miles on volcanic sand, which isn't fun, um, continuously upwards, 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 upwards. And then you come over this dip. And then these kids just came, like 17, 18 of them, Fly past me. Flying past me, because they've only got 300 yards they're to go. They're on the half marathon <laughs> coming to the end, yeah. And I'm thinking, oh God, I've really messed this up. I'm not doing well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an experience that's well worth doing. Um, and, and if anybody is thinking about it, it's, it's yeah. It, your films, are, the point I was making in a massively long-winded way, just for change, is that your films are a, a fantastic, almost travel channel for runners. Oh, that's very kind of you to say. I think that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wish we weren't here. Um, but yes. <laughs> yeah, it often is that. The, the, it's the stupid thing about ultras and trail running is that um, it's when you look back that you realise how awesome it was. But sometimes, and you know, Tracy was saying about the, the, her race, you, you, when you're there, you just want it to end. You know, like there, there's moments in those races where I just wish it wasn't happening. I wish I wasn't there. And then you, you cross the finish line and you go, that was absolutely amazing. You know, 24 hours later, you've signed up for the next one. They, they should have some kind of sobriety test for SI entries and things like that, where you have to, a cooling off period before you can get your credit card out. Um, Stephen, that was brilliant. Thank you. Um, anybody, 
does anybody from the audience have any questions? We should have pre-warned you. Yeah, they see they're sitting there going, oh, I didn't realise we were going to be involved here. What's your next big challenge you've got your eye on? Well, the thing I haven't shown you there are all the DNFs. So um, Ben Nevis Ultra is 50k, but it's 4,000 metres of ascent, basically up Ben Nevis and then up some more Monroes. I've DNF'd that twice the past two years. I'm going back, I've got to finish that. And then TDS, which is arguably the hardest race in Chamonix, uh, even though it's not quite as long as UTMB itself. I've, I've attempted that three times. The first time I was so tired I actually fell asleep on the trail and the back markers, the sweepers, woke me up. So I DNF'd that. The next year was COVID, so we didn't go. And the year after that um, was uh, the year that a, a runner ahead of us fell off a cliff and died. Um, and the whole race was abandoned. And, and so uh, three times, this will, be my, this will be my third attempt at, at doing TDS. So I've got that in September. Yeah. Hello. I know. Stephen said it was fun. Yeah. We were talking the, about this on the run earlier, and you said I should really video the times when I'm puking on the run. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know. Right. So, a lot of people, a lot of people um, come up to me and complain at me that I made it look too fun, and they entered a race because they saw the video that I made, and it was horrific, and they hated every minute of it. Why did I make it look so, like such good fun? And I, I, I totally appreciate that, and there are plenty of moments that, I mean, I do get sometimes, that CCC run, there is a scene where I'm standing there going, I've done 20K, I've got 80K to go, I don't think I can do it, I'm so tired. But I have, I, yeah, I, I throw up a lot, and, and I've never filmed myself throwing up, and, and I, you know, loads of times when it's just awful. But of course, those are the times that you can't be bothered to film because you're too depressed, and, you know, yeah. So I should, yeah, I will try and do more of that though, just to put people off. I wish I'd have known that before I signed up for CCC this year. Exactly. I think we had a question over there. Hello. That's interesting because I am, I am absolutely with Tracy. Gels uh, and, and sugary, carb-loaded drinks um, make me sick and, and um, even um, we're talking about being a fast runner, so I, I did my first sub three marathon last last year, two years ago, two years ago, and I didn't have anything at all. So I ran a sub three pace, and I didn't have any food at all until twenty miles when I had a sip of coke, and that was it. I cannot a I can't eat very much because it just makes me feel sick, but. B, I, I, I feel like um, I am better, I'm better fueled when I'm not shoving sugar into myself. I'm, I'm burning my fat stores. And, and once you do that a lot, um, your body gets used to burning those fat stores over and above the fast, high GI sugars. Um, so I don't take gels. I'm right with Tracy on long marathon, long ultras, it's real food. You know, it's pizza, you know, it's cake, <laughs> it's, it's sausage rolls, it's crisps, um, all that kind of stuff. But even, so on ultras, but even on fast road marathons, I, I don't take any gels at all. It's hard to do. Some people, some people love gels and some people get on really well with gels. And it's, and you know, they look at me like I'm mad. Um, but I just can't do it, and I've just taught myself to not do it, and I can still run relatively fast without it. No Good excuse, question. No excuse for not eating your vegetables any time. Yeah. Even, on, even when you're running, you've got to eat your broccoli. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? That's it. Thank you very Good. much. Thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. I've got to go home now, though. I can't stay for the end because my wife will kill me if I'm not home before midnight. I've got a five-hour drive then. Bless you. Is that all right? Yeah, I think you can go. Oh, thanks. I'm going to know it.
No, 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 no problem at all. I've enjoyed it. Oh, God. Honestly, don't ever get into an email conversation with Tracy. <laughs> Have you done this? Have you done that? When... Honestly, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's been fine. <laughs> Stephen Cousins, thank you thank very you much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.